This was a team that, again, was down to St. Anselm as much as three goals in the first half back in the NE10 semifinals and eventually winning that game 15-11. Shows you just the tenacity that this Dolphins offense has. But it's an offense also that's looking to rebound after only scoring two goals against Adelphi in the last game. Yeah, and, and it's really weird. Uh, Adelphi is another example of a team that, regardless of talent level, just knows how to play the Dolphins. Two wins for El Delphi against Lemoyne this year. That's the matchup for either of these teams if they win this game today. And that'll be really interesting for both squads, but quite obviously, especially Lemoyne, if they win this game tonight. Well, first thing they have to do is get past the Hawks down 3 1 to St. Ansel. Well, I've actually behind Dex, and the uh, shot just dings off the post and eventually picked up by Nick Millette. Man, what a look on offense, though. Really just missed the shot because he totally beat the goalkeeper there. Jack Robinson just couldn't find the right corner. Clear goes up. Casey Nevins has a free look at goal if he wants it. Instead, hands it off to Devin Andrews to restart the attack. Pierce. Over to Collins. Free is Collins Sipek. Thought about the shot. That gives it up. Ed McCreary. Screen for Pierce, goes nowhere. Zach Pierce right in front of Vex, surrounded by Bonavita and Ryan Slattery. Eventually Kevin Sheehan picks up the ball, but more than half the shot clock just ticked away. Devin Andrews alone at top, 30 seconds left. Almost lost the ball, but Collins reaches the stick across his body. Yeah, you're not going to see that often with a LeMoyne team. 20 seconds. McCreary, the dodge on the short stick, goes around him and scores. Ben McCreary gives LeMoyne their second goal of the game. Oh my goodness. McCreary with the athleticism just punched his way through. And that is why he is one of the premier midfielders in the NE10. Make it 20 goals on the season. Kids right from his hometown too. Cicero right down the road. Went to CBA and man, he loves this Central New York weather tonight. 26 goals last year for McCreary. First on the team now, a bit of regression, only 20 goals this year, but still good enough for the any 10 second team. And by his standards, good to see the ball find the back of the net. And you know, finally gets another faceoff win against Batia. So again, you've seen the faceoff discrepancy with Dan Sheehan not trotting out Sam Curry. It feels like he's going to have to rely on Nico Batia a lot more. Yeah, Sam Curry on the season, coming into this game, 62.4% face-off wins. That thing is dropping rapidly right now for every Fogo on the team. Under two and a half to play here in the first quarter. It's St. Anselm, who's up by one. A big reason why getting more of the possession because of the face-off wins. Jack Wells being forced away by John Galimi. Can, he get, can Wells get around Galimi? Not quite. Tries a rush shot. It goes over well over the cage. Was deflected as well on the way there. It almost looked like he was trying to toss it back to his partner or honestly just get a reset in possession. Jack Robinson trying to swim dodge. All alone, Tomaszewski. That's an easy shot and an easy goal for Sean Tomaszewski. He's second of the day. That is what they do. They just connect passes. And Tomaszewski, I'd say, is one of the best roll dodgers in the NE10. A guy who just finds the hole and connects the passes up at the top of the eight and Sure enough, he just punched it in the bottom end of the cage. Yeah, held quiet in the last time these two teams played. Now two goals against Delia in the cage. And now the Hawks restore their two-goal lead. Now can LeMoyne figure out something on offense? Capiro wins the faceoff this time. This is a shocking development. AJ Capiro looking for a goal, and it's well over the cage. St. Anselm, though, with a backup. That's what head coach Shimano likes about Kaparo so much, though. A guy who, he says, plays with his hair on fire. And two just won the face off and just rushed down the alley trying to get a shot off. Under two minutes to go. Nick Larson against Nick Knoll. Colin Mulvey gets the ball taken away. And Robinson has to retreat for it, but he loses the ball, and Ryan Albert picks it up. So first, Mulvey lost the ball, and then Robinson couldn't pick up the GB. 
John Delimi from distance, and it's stopped by Hart. A great foot save from C.J. Hart. And C.J. Hart, one of the smaller keepers in the league, so you're going to see a lot of short ground ball saves, and that's what he does. He's so flexible, too, so quick. Guy who can get his body down and save it with his stick. You saw it right there. Literally, you're right, exactly a foot save. Got the inside part of his foot on the ball, and it popped out right under his stick. So that was some elite athleticism and flexibility on display. That's exactly what you're looking for in a keeper like Hart. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter, Hawks up by two. The reason why they've held the ball on this side of the field for pretty much the entire first quarter. Not too many chances for the Lemoyne offense to get a good look as Jackwell slows things down and now starts the attack with 30 seconds. Loses Braden Elmer and couldn't find the ball to Tomaszewski, but Jack Robinson was there for the backup and right into the body of Delia. Now Lemoyne looking to run. Here's Braden Elmer, 20 seconds left. Getting chased from behind and he loses the ball. Great check from behind by Jack Andrews as everyone's on the floor and it's an off-ball push that gives the ball to Lemoyne. It's a big reset right here. Carter Collins has John Bergen streaking out from the box and he scores. From distance, unbelievable. Pinpoint snipe from outside and that's exactly what they wanted. Literally 10 seconds flat left going into the second quarter and that brings him back within a goal. I think it starts with just winning a faceoff here. Even if it doesn't turn into another offensive possession, this winning a faceoff proves going into the second quarter that you're well back within this game. The man up special is John Bergen shows why he's a threat from distance. And now Lemoyne again down by one. Curry and Yanoni facing off, and this time it's Curry who finally gets a faceoff win. It, fe it feels like the first time since 10 minutes ago. Devin Andrews tries to fire a shot towards the crease, but it's deflected away, and that is how the first quarter ends. We head on into the second with a Lemoyne. Three goal, with Lemoyne at three goals and St. Anselm at four. Welcome back on Finch TV. Kyle Marshak alongside Christian Guzman and Lemoyne Dolphins here at home trying to get their first round NCAA tournament win out of the way against a team that they are 2-0 on the season against in the St. Anselm Hawks. But man, the Hawks are just winning face-offs early and it's turned into four goals. They have a one-goal lead, one quarter into action, Christian. And it feels like that's the recipe for success for St. Ans Anselm. It's get the ball away from the Lemoyne offense because you saw it in that first quarter pretty much every time bar one or two times that the Lemoyne offense touched the ball was fighting the back of the net against C.J. Hart. So St. Anselm has to control the possession and they've been doing it in the first quarter by winning the faceoff. So it got to continue here. Caprio and Curry meet at midfield. Lemoyne down one goal. Ball pops up. And a big ground ball waiting to start it for the Dolphins. Here they come from right to left on your screen. White uniforms with the navy green sporting are the Dolphins against the navy blue. Navy green, I like that color description for yeah. this. You, you don't often hear navy green as a great dark color description. Spinning around, trying to find some space towards the top of the eight. Yeah, you know, the uniforms, especially in Division II lacrosse, they get very creative with it. Yeah. Back end of the cage, back out to the top. Andrew scanning his options. Now back out to the top. Sipek. Pass back out and shot wide of the goal from McCreary. And the Dolphins will reset. Go, 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 
Dolphins rowing around the right side of the cage. And they've been a little more methodical in their approach offensively in the second quarter to start off. Only one shot attempt so far. Dodging in, now back of the cage again. Swung back out to the top. Roll dodge to the right. Ball pops loose. And the Hawks will pick it back up. Kyle Fisher, one of the best face guard defenders in the NE10, will pick it up. And back up the field we go. The Hawks with their first offensive possession of the second quarter. Now to the left of the cage, rotating around. And as I said, Christian, both teams have been so methodical with their approach offensively. Well, it's just because it's so hard to break down the defenses of both teams that they need to be methodical. You can't just kind of blindly run at guys against these defenses because that's how the turnovers get, get caught. Trying to roll around the left side of the post and they'll cycle back through to the top. Here comes number 44, Larson. Switching sides, he'll spin around, trying to get the screen. He trips over his own foot, and that's the effect of the Lemoyne turf right there. Back up the way we go, Max Kramer. Well past the defenders, he has space. Right side, back out to the top. Andrews with a shot low, and it's saved. Ball pops loose, and Navy Blue will pick it up. Well, that was a good look from Andrews, and nobody doesn't take too many shots like that from distance. Oh, no, Slattery loses the ball. That one pops out, and that is a mistake you simply cannot afford to make from Ryan Slattery. NE10 Defensive Player of the Year. So picking it up for the Dolphins and back up the way we go is Carter Collins. He'll dump it off back to midway. Colin Sipak scanning his options. Guarded tightly. He'll pass to the right side. He has some space. Spinning around, he'll dodge back out. Devin Andrews. Now Sipak and Pierce. Shot off the post and saved. It'll stay in play. Can the Hawks win the ground ball? Fighting for it near the sideline. He'll pick it back up. It's Sipak. Back to the top. Andrews swung back out to the right side. Pierce scanning his options now. Hard to keep up with the pace of play, but now Andrews will settle back down. Zach Pierce rolling around towards the end line. Will Palmer guarding tightly. Pierce, push from behind, no whistle on the play, ball pops loose, and now the flag comes out. Whistle yeah. on the play, and a man will get sent off. Yeah, the St. Anselm fans don't like that call, but it was clear push from behind from Will Palmer while Pierce was dodging, and that gives the man up opportunity for Lemoyne. No lack of presence from the Massachusetts fans. So now stepping onto the field, number 48, Seth Benedict. We'll start with the ball on the right side of the cage. And this is where you see the changes in the offense come when you have Benedict and Bergen, the second and third choice midfielders on the man up unit. Huge opportunity for the Dolphins to tie things back up. So this is only 30 seconds, so it's not a lot of time on the man up. Both teams have had plenty of experience with the man up. The Dolphins do not foul out very often. Rolling around, still rotating. They're connecting their passes so well today. Still cycling around the cage. Back out to the top. Pierce looks for a shot. Now to the right side, back out to Pierce. He wants it from distance, saved by Delia. And back to the right side, excuse me, CJ Hart on the save, mixing up goalkeepers. Here come the Hawks soaring up the field. What a save from C.J. Hart. He goes, the shot is to his stick side, but it's low, and he's got to adjust well to it, and he did so. C.J. Larson now to his twin brother, Nick Larson, towards the top. Two twins as a focal point of the offense for the Hawks all season long. Now to the left side. Rolling in, had space, spins back out, shot from distance. Looks like it kissed the net on the outside, and it rolls back into the hands of another St. Anselm Hawk. Now rolling in, and Nick Larson misses. Well past the left side of the post, and it rolls out of play. St. Anselm with 40 left in the shot clock, a chance to reset. And now you can see the pace is starting to pick up more for the Hawks. And you see the difference right there. The Hawks extending their lead, getting the shot off. And number 23, Tomaszewski putting another goal in the back of the net. And Delia has been beaten low a couple of times, and he gets beaten there on the, just the frantic pace that the Hawks tried to extend. And that's exactly 
how the Hawks got their initial lead back time the last teams last time that these two teams played. Now beating back at midfield. 5-3 lead for the St. Anselm Hawks. Your five seed in the first round of the Division II Men's Lacrosse NCAA Tournament. The LeMoyne Dolphins with a huge pickup. They'll reset towards the back end of their cage. Yeah, this is how LeMoyne gets the momentum back in their court. It's winning these faceoffs. Nate Arnold will pass up to midfield. He'll step back across and hand it off to his partner, number 42, Casey Nevins. He'll dish it off to another partner. And now they'll roll up the field, number 22, Sam Lambert with the ball. Now to the left side, back into his hands. Lambert has a lot of speed, Christian. Past a couple of defenders, he'll dish back out. LeMoyne trying to work against these short sticks. Kelly with the ball. Back out to the top, it's Andrews. Rotating around, shot from distance, it goes well out of play. John Bergen missing from about 10 yards out. That's a distance he's very comfortable shooting from. We've seen a couple attempts from outside there before. And he'll, he'll go from even further as well, so we know that he's a long distance threat. Ball pops out of the stick. Carter Collins has struggled to maintain possession a little bit. He'll pass back out. Lambert to the right side. He'll roll dodge in. How about that face guard defense from every single Hawk on the field? Will Harvey showing out. Back to the right side. Behind the cage, rolling around, trying to connect the pass as it pops loose. Both teams pinballing for it, and the deep holes of the Hawks will pick it back up. Uh-oh, ball pops loose once more. Bodies flying. No more man up for the Dolphins. And you saw the difference right there as they toss the ball up the way. Yeah, the Dolphins tried to run at the St. Anselm defense a bit more, but just couldn't find a shooting lane. Will Harvey will pass back out. Now Jack Robinson. All we're missing is one syllable, and Jack Robinson is synonymous with another famous <laughs> athlete. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw that name. Already two goals for Robinson today. One thing he does share with the famous Jackie Robinson, the baseball player, is his speed. You can see it right now, rolling around the left side. Robinson wants a goal. Stuffed on defense. How about the pressure? Trying to roll right side. He'll pass back out behind the cage. Defender hung up. 28 on the shot clock. The Hawks trying to extend their lead. Eight minutes left here until halftime. Found a man top of the cage. Tried to go BTB, and that one goes out of play. Getting fancy with it. The Hawks looking real comfortable. It was Tomaszewski going for his hat trick. Nick Larson wants a shot from distance. That one over the crossbar and out of play. That'll probably do it for the offensive chances. Six seconds on the shot clock. He'll just dump it out to the right side. And the Dolphins will roll back up from right to left. Again, if you're just tuning in, Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman. 7.38 left until halftime. You are watching the first round of the men's lacrosse division two tournament. Stepping out of the field, another big deep hole for the Dolphins, Nick Millette. Yeah, Millette and Brandau are circling between that last uh, third close deep position. Body scattered across the field. The Dolphins rolling around the back end of the cage. Now to the left side. Sipek. Rolling to the right side. He'll pass off again. Connecting the pass is shot low and it's deflected out of play. No, it looked like he faked that one. He got me big time on yeah, that one. Yeah, it looked like it went right to the body or maybe the post, but oh! <laughs> How about that shot? Soaring through. McCreary. Finding the back of the net and soaring like the Hawks. And as the postseason continues to roll on, sometimes it just helps to go to your veteran players. And Ben McCreary, a guy who's been in this position, count this amount of times for the Dolphins, puts up a highlight goal. Airgate style, just flying over the cage. Nearly illegal, too. He almost <laughs> jumped from the back end of the cage. But as I said, airgate style, and he tossed that thing in there. On the faceoff again. And another huge win for Navy Blue. The Hawks pull away with it. Will Palmer is so good at winning those ground balls. The yeah, reason why he is one of the best short stick D middies in all of any 10. Now to be a short stick D midi and still yeah. win those ground balls so effectively is, is so impressive. 
what you see sometimes with Casey and Evans on the other side as well. Robinson pushed from behind. The that physicality on display. They'll keep the ball in play, though. Yeah, that's speak of the devil. That's right there. Casey Nevin showing why he's also a, a guy who's just trusted on those faceoffs. His strength there to just push guys away. Roll dodging to the left of the cage. Now back end, off the screen, right side. And back out. They'll reset with Noah Larson. Larson pushing his way in. Pass across the cage. Shot oh. off the top of the post. And it will roll out of play. There was a presence there from the goalkeeper, but man, McCulvey could just not finish. Mulvey, excuse me. He was all alone on the other side of the crease. It's a beautiful pass by Noah Larson, but Delia just made his body big enough. Noah Larson looking to replicate the play right there. He'll just turn around and spin it to the back of the net. Same style, rolling around the side of the net, and it's a 6-4 lead. The Hawks continue to extend it. And now they're... The Hawks are starting to figure out an offensive strategy against Delia. Again, the any 10 goalkeeper of the year. But the Hawks are getting in his face and saying, okay, we're going to just fire shots right in front of you. No pass needed. Just found the back of the net. Now Sam Curry and company for the Dolphins looking for a huge ground ball win here. They need a faceoff, Christian. Shoveling it out, and sure enough, the Hawks will maintain possession. Or not. It pinballs back out and into the stick of another Hawk. Kyle Fisher will start off with possession. He'll roll back off to his office and let the offense do their work. 6-4 lead for the St. Anselm Hawks. This would be a massive upset. As you said, it is so hard for teams to connect three wins in a row against a dominant team like the Dolphins, your reigning national champions. Remember, this is a, his this is a history that favors Lemoyne. Only one time the Hawks have beaten the Dolphins ever. Jack Wells trying to push past the defense. Ball pops loose. Pops back out. Nick Noel on defense wins a huge possession. It's still loose in the midfield. Jack Wells will pick it up now. Back and forth we go. Low shot deflected away. No lack of shot attempts from either side in this second quarter. Ooh, Tomaszewski had an excellent opportunity there, but he shot it right at Delia. Again, a 6-4 lead, and teams will have to talk things over. The Dolphins... Want to talk things over. And I think they need it. Dan Sheehan, his son, is yet to make a huge difference so far. He had the first goal of the game, and the offense has slowed down since, Christian. What do they got to do to get back in the scoring call? They, they just have to value the ball on offense a bit more because they know that their offensive opportunities, the way that the faceoffs are going right now, aren't in their favor. So you have to value the ball, maybe slow things a bit more down on offense. But then the real reset has to come at the faceoff because this is an area where Lemoyne has dominated the entire year, but right now it's in the favor of the Hawks. So you need to retool the faceoff unit and figure out, okay, what's the best way that I'm going here? Is it going to be with Curry? Is it going to be with Matia? And get my also my wings. Just pick up a couple of more ground balls. It's you said it. Faceoffs mm -hmm. are such a, an important part, excuse me, and Sam Curry, senior for this team, 62.4% face-off win percentage coming into this matchup. Yep. He's an All-American honorable mention. He's an any 10 all-conference first team from last year. And this year as well. So he's kept up that play. I just think right now what you're seeing is that, is that there, he's not winning the ball cleanly, and that's bringing the wings in for St. Anselm into play. And when you don't win the ball cleanly, you have to tr – that's where a lot of your trust comes into your wings to help win some of those ground balls. And right now the wings of – the Hawks, especially Will Palmer and Kyle Fisher, are doing an excellent job of giving St. Anselm possession. And so that's where you have to see guys like Casey Nevins, guys like Nick Knoll. Maybe even you move Mike Brandau back to the wing to win just a couple of these face-offs because right now the Dolphins aren't getting the possessions that they need to flourish the offense that they want to show off. 6-4 lead for the St. Anselm Hawks. You are watching on Finch TV. Again, Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman providing you the first round of the men's Division II lacrosse tournament. The NE 10s were all wrapped up. The Dolphins coming off a wild loss against a team they don't often lose against in Adelphi University, but they are 0 2 against them this year. That is the team they will miss, or excuse me, meet in the second round of the tournament. And for both of these teams, you can't look that far in ahead. I know Adelphi is a scary opponent to face off of, especially given the results the Panthers have gotten this year. St. Anselm 2-3 and three against ranked competition this year. 
The Dolphins 7-2. and two. two different stories coming into this tournament. Here comes Larson. Body's flying. He'll pass back to the cage. Pass across the cage, rolling around again. Picklin trying to scan his options. Still suffocated once he gets close to that cage. The face guard defense of the Dolphins has been so impressive all day, yet the pass connections has been the reason for the St. Anselm Hawks scoring. 6-4 lead for the Hawks. Back to the top of the eight. Spinning around, Andrews. Between two defenders, ball pops loose, and the Dolphins will go the other way with it. And with pace, too. Millette back out to the top. They have some space. Inside. Pass across. They could not get the assist attempt. Ball pops loose. It will stay in bounds, and he'll keep it in, in the corner. Yeah, Sheehan wanted Collins right at the crease, but the pass a little bit behind him, and now this is where you have to settle down a bit for Lemoyne. Get everyone back on the field. Collins Sipak looking for his 21st goal of the year. Back out to the eight. He rolls around. Back to Sipak. He's so shifty from distance. Instead, he'll toss it off. Now Pierce between two defenders. Getting body. Scans through. Has some space. Pass off, and the shot is in. From distance, Carter Collins showing out. It's a one-goal game. And this is that goal all comes from Zach Pierce. No one has stick skills dodging against midfielders like Zach Pierce on this LeMoyne team. He's really showed up over the past couple of games for LeMoyne, and you start to see it there. Why? His dodging is on another level, and his stick skills gets the ball away and into the, Col the stick of Collins, who has a free shot over the head of Hart. Now, Carter Collins, a grad transfer from Linden One University, a U.S. ILA All-American, U.S. ILA first team All-Region, team of the week selection, any accolade you could ask for, and that level of experience, that level of talent is why you get guys like him who can score late in this first half. That was a punctual one at that. And a very needed one as well. You start to get Carter Collins going, this is when one team gets even scarier. There's so many tools in the tool cat for the Lemoyne Dolphins. Cal Cave. Ooh, it was off the side netting. Deflect off the netting, as you said. Nearly caught some posts. Now slipping out on the right side and keeping it back in for the Dolphins is Seth Benedict. Back to the top of the eight. Pass across. And they have yet to drop a ball connecting these passes. To the left side. Back out to the top. Carter Collins. Again, the guy who just scored for him. Now back out to the back end of the cage. Andrew still scanning his options. Guarded tightly by Kyle Fisher. He's been a freak on defense all evening long. Still getting bodied. The navy blue jerseys just showing out. Stick balls. Collins back out to the left side. Shot from distance and just past the post from Kyle Caves off the bench. So pretty much the third midfield line out here for Dan Sheehan. Re really trying to energize the team with a backup unit. The Dolphins badly need a goal here. Eight on the shot clock. They may elect to just let it go. Still pushing for a shot, though. Four, three, two, and they get the goal. Seth Benedict ties it up. 6-6 six, six ball game. What an excellent solo effort from Seth Benedict. And now you're starting to see that Lemoyne is maybe figuring out a way to beat the St. Anselm offense, and uh, the defense, I should say, and it's by aggressively dodging. You saw with Zach Pierce getting Carter Collins for free, and now you see Seth Benedict just back his guy down and fire it past C.J. Hart. Individual efforts are what makes this Lemoyne team special. Now here come the wing play. 42 is lined up right in front of us. Who will win the ground ball? A huge win for the Dolphins. Momentum in their favor. Rolling from right to left. They have all the time they want. 70 seconds on the game clock. Just more than so on the shot clock, so they'll have plenty of time. And now a timeout for the Dolphins. And sure enough, Sheehan really wants to get this goal to take the lead before halftime. Yeah, and there's about a 
the the game clock there's three seconds less than the shot clock so Lemoyne can hold for the final possession here and how much of a momentum swing would that be down by two goals at 1.64 you on a mini two goal run here and then potentially could take the lead into the halftime locker room after a good stretch of 15 20 minutes where you weren't winning face-offs is a huge momentum swing for the Dolphins now this is kind of technical but what no what differences have you noticed where Sam Curry and company at the midfield are actually starting to win possessions at the face-off well you me I mentioned it beforehand that they weren't winning balls cleanly now Curry and Nico Mitty are starting to win balls cleanly to themselves they're not letting the wing play from St. Anselm get to them first and really start to bother them as they try to win the ground ball. Because the face-off guys for Lemoyne are winning the ball to themselves more, now you can start to see the ball and the momentum shift in their favor. Now the number one seed in the North region, the Lemoyne Dolphins are 6-1 and one at home this season. As for the number five seed, or the number fifth ranked, excuse me, also five seeded St. St. Anselm Hawks, excuse me, are five and two away so both teams have records that favor the uh, approach they have regardless of position but the Dolphins man they are a tough team to beat at home again the reigning national champions undefeated last season one of if not the best seasons in division two men's lacrosse history and they are not the same team they were last year but certainly still the same caliber as they are oh so dangerous here even without face-off wins now with 69 on the shot clock, the Dolphins have a chance to try and grab their first lead of the ball game. Dolphins going to be very methodical here. Colin Sipak back out to half. Ben McCreary. First midfield out for LeMoyne. So you had the third midfield create a goal, which says Benedict. Now it's the first midfield that's going to take us into the halftime. McCreary cutting to the right. Now cycling through. It's Pierce. He had a goal earlier. Pass out to Andrews. Back out to the top. Still cycling through their options. Roll dodging in. In front of the cage. Shot. Deflected away. A huge save from Delia. CJ Hart, excuse me. Second time I've messed <laughs> them up. Yeah, but that was a change up from McCreary. It may have, his stick may have gotten clipped as he was trying to shot. And uh, yeah, the flag flies. I thought I thought McCreary was going to be offside there. He was. So, so a couple of bodies on the wrong side of the field. Yeah, but it's going to be big because as the whistle sounds here, St. Anselm is going to start the third quarter or the third quarter a man up. You're absolutely right. So with that flag flying, it is a 6-6 ball game going into halftime. The St. Anselm Hawks get a huge flag. They'll have a huge opportunity to be a man up and get that big goal. They do not go a man down very often. A huge mistake going into halftime. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman here on Finch TV. The first round of the men's Division II NCAA tournament. Your Dolphins have tied things up. 6-6 six, six ball game going into the second half. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you?
Hello everyone and welcome back to Finns TV. This is the first round of the Division II Men's Lacrosse Championship. And the number three seed Lemoyne in the North Division takes on the number six seed St. Anselm in the first round. Right now it's half time. We're currently tied up at six between the Finns and the Hawks. And the big discrepancy between the first and second quarter has been through the faceoffs. Yeah, again, you started where the Hawks were just a team that came out and started winning ground balls, and their wing play was fantastic. A team that decided to elect a different Fogo at the start of the game. Now Caprio's gotten out and started to win ground balls as well. But again, it, it's been very interesting. They clearly, the third time through now, knew a new approach to the faceoffs in order to win it. And so far, the Hawks have had that advantage, although these shots have gone in the way of the Dolphins. The Lemoyne shot discrepancy as well has been a little bit shifted towards the end of that second quarter as Lemoyne started to get a couple of more faceoff wins. We started to see him go on that mini two goal run to end the second quarter and just because that Lemoyne offense just got those possessions. Yeah that was huge to go on that two goal run towards the end and like you said the faceoffs and just more possession times where it started because if you give them equal offensive playing time I think the Dolphins will win nine out of ten times they are just a better shot creating team but that's why the face-offs have been so important. I'd say the Hawks have won probably 70% of the face-offs. They've owned about 60% of the offensive possession so far. With that being said, they've just had more shots to take, and that's what's kept them in this game. We won't get a face-off to start the second half. Ben McCreary was offside to end the first half, so he's immediately into the penalty box for the first 30 seconds as St. Anselm immediately starts with possession and a 30-second man up. They'll start in their main initiator, the first team, all any 10 midfielder, Nick Larson. And he gets the ball rolling. Six on five for St. Anselm. Tomaszewski. Wells. Here's Jack Andrews. Not too much time left on the man up. Only five seconds, and Jack Andrews whistles his shot past the right of Frank Delia's cage. Now, I'm not very uh, sure about that approach going forward. You know, you only have 30 seconds with the man up. Why not just try and punch it down their throats? Because now that guy's going to rush on right now, and there's just no use in wasting that man up possession right there. Full strength now for the Dolphins. So 20 more seconds of six on six in the first possession of the second half. Casey Nevin. Getting back down by Nick Larson. Larson tries to shoot around him. And Tomaszewski on the rebound. What a save from Delia. And that's what Delia does as a bigger goalkeeper. He's so good with shots in the air. And he just got that stick in the way. Again, you see that difference with C.J. Hart, St. Anselm's goalkeeper himself. A smaller frame guy. He has a couple foot saves today. And shots in the air have just fell in the favor of the Dolphins so far. And the ball going the other way on a lazy pass. And so Lemoyne takes over, survives the first St. Anselm attack of the second half. On the clear now, not too many options for Brandau on the far side. Goes back to Delia, only five seconds left to clear, and Nate Arnold goes across the timeline. Devin Andrews directing traffic as the first midfield is on. Carter Collins taking Ryan Slattery all the way out, but now back to Ben McCreary. Colin Sipek and Zach Pierce, your first midfield for Lemoyne. <coughs> Around the short stick, excuse me, the long pole, but has the ball taken away. It was Kyle Fisher, a lazy pass for, almost got past Will Harvey, but into St. Anselm territory now. Well, just settles things down. Andrews. Running past Sipek. Caught on on defense. Both teams want to start in a punctual goal here. But clearly a very methodical approach on defense for both squads to start off this half. Nick Larson against Millette. Around Millette and it's right into Delia's body. A couple of good saves for Frank Delia to start off the second half. And that's what helps as a keeper when you're a big-bodied goalkeeper. Just absorb that thing, too. Doesn't look like he has a ton of padding. I can't imagine that felt very nice. The NE10 goalkeeper of the year starting off the 
second 30 minutes strong. Gets the ball across to Colin Sipek. Now it's Andrews who's caught out on defense for St. Ansel. Andrews against Holland. Here's Seth Benedek, a goal today. Benedek around X. Doesn't get to GLE before getting it off. Devin Andrews. Around his defender, Andrews takes the shot and scores. Devin Andrews got past Andrew Bonavita. And the Dolphins get their first lead since Kevin Sheehan scored the opening goal of the game. Make it 27 goals on the season. That is what Devin Andrews does. He's such an elite, just athlete really on the field. A guy who can just punch his way through, and you saw it right there with his size. Found the back of the net. Just beat him with speed too. So impressive. The one-on-one -on -one dodging skills have been on display for Lemoyne ever since probably halfway through the second quarter, and it's paid off in dividends here. First face-off of the third quarter. These bodies collide at midfield, and bodies on the floor as well, but Nico Mattia eventually picks up the ground ball. And Carter Collins will take it behind X. Gives time for the first midfield to run on for Lemoyne. Pierce, one of the best one-on-one -on -one Dodgers. Now McCreary has the short stick. Trying to fight his way past Will Harvey. Collins, this is scary. Collins had a short stick on him, but the screen not quite effective for McCreary. Now Pierce with a short stick. Andrews. Pierce back up top again against Harvey. Seth Pierce over the top of Hart. Largest lead for the Dolphins on the day. It's a two-goal advantage. Oh, my goodness. Spinning around, stick in his face. Low angle and punch the corner. That is as sniped as it gets right there. One of the best shots this game. 30 goals now for Zach Pierce on this year. Collins. Now to Ben McCreary and his shot deflected as it's off of Ben Genest. Goals coming from Devin Andrews, Zach Pierce, and John Bergen to start off the third quarter for Lemoyne. And now with the Dolphins starting to win faceoffs, they're opening up a lead over St. Anselm. A pass intended for Pierce over the middle, really one of the first disconnected passes we've seen from Lemoyne today. Yeah, that's uh, not really exemplary of what the fans have missed out on because the Dolphins have just been connecting passes, little to no errors. Uh, Will Palmer was all alone in the middle. And an off-ball push is going to give the possession back to St. Anselm. But the pass was a little bit too high for Palmer, who was streaking down the middle. And the St. Anselm fans want a little bit more than just possession. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm surprised I did not see a flag fly right there because it just looked like a sloppy play on defense after the throw went away. A lot of bodies collided. But really won't... Really only the third opportunity we've seen from St. Anselm. Frank Dealey has been excellent so far in this quarter. A couple of saves for him. Trying to get past John Galimi. Defender hung up. Time to survey as St. Anselm looks for options in front of the cage. Still looking for options. The cutter. And Braden Elmore checks from behind. Taking down Jack Wells. And now Lemoyne looking to run over the head of Mike Randall. But Devin Andrews is there for the backup. Andrews trying to pass by Holland. And now Lemoyne settles things down a little bit. We're about halfway through the third quarter. Up by three are the Dolphins. Caves out to Benedict. Seth Benedict around Kyle Fisher. And it's swished back out. Now it's towards the middle and a shot wide from Sam Lambert. Yeah, Lambert has yet to make a huge impact on offense tonight. Usually a guy who's a lot more punctual with his shot creation. Dodged right into an open alley, but just could not find the back of the net. You know, that's a tough angle too, especially with a keeper like Hart in front of you. 
but with this Dolphins team, you just keep chucking shots their way, something's going to find the back of the net. And a moving screen called on Caves, it looks like, to give possession to the Hawks. And Kevin Sheehan tries to check the ball away from Will Harvey to no avail. So a missed opportunity for Lemoyne to even grow more of a lead. And St. Anselm has a chance now to put some momentum back in their court. They need to get going quick, though. Down three goals with the pace of this game. They want to get back on the board as soon as possible because these next 20 minutes are going to be very slow when it comes to scoring. Thomas Ockel gets the ball away. Colin Mulvey. Mulvey against Nevins. And Noah Larson, bouncer, goes past the cage of Delia. I like that look from Larson, just trying to dunk it in, rolling around the cage. And we've seen that have a lot of success uh, from St. Anselm in the, in the beginning of the game. Really getting to the face of Delia. Ackle again. Hand off to Noah Larson. Larson's against Arnold. Lombardi. Now back out to Mulvey. Call him Mulvey. Ackle. Tomaszewski. Haven't heard much from him in this second half. He's been awfully quiet. Yeah, only five seconds to shoot as well. Can they get a shot off? They can, but it's past the cage of Delia from Mulvey. And with one second on the shot clock, that'll do it for the St. Anselm possession. LeMoyne really needs to connect their passes here. Whenever they do find an opportunity in front of the cage, it just seems like the defense soaks it up and they can't find the stick right in front of the net. Cannot afford to make those mistakes this time around. The clock is ticking. I say with the momentum in their favor, they punch another goal away here going into the final quarter and this game's almost wrapped up. First midfield out for LeMoyne. The next one, opportunity to get that goal. And it comes to Colin Sipek, who gets absolutely crushed after releasing the ball. But Colin Sipek finds the score sheet. Four minutes left, and Lemoyne's up by four. Speak of the devil. I said that fourth goal was elusive, but when it comes, it could be a huge one. And Sipek punches it in. That is a huge goal for Lemoyne. And a big goal means that Coach Shimada needs a timeout to talk things over with St. Anselm. And a fitting song to play right now. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a four-goal run for Lemoyne in this third quarter. A 6 nothing run in general for the Dolphins all the way starting back in the second quarter. And it's really pushing up right now. You're right. They were down 6-4 at one point. For them to pull through and make this run right now is absolutely massive again it's a game of momentum and once you start winning face-offs which is where I think it started this team has just taken it and ran away with it and it's really a lot of it like we mentioned at the top of the broad at the top of the second half has come down to the face-offs as Lemoyne has we started slow a little bit but now with Mika Matia taking the majority of the face-offs it feels like he's gotten into a big rhythm yeah, again, you, you said the word rhythm has been a big piece of it as well. They've just totally gotten into a groove. You see with the midfield play, I mean, first of all on ground balls, their, their wing play has been a lot more impressive. The ground balls, they almost have the right positioning every time where they have a guy ready for that ball to pop out. With that being said, it, it just looks more like a cohesive unit for the Dolphins, and they're really running away with this thing. C.J. Hart has played 41 minutes total now in the last games of the second half against Lemoyne. He's made zero saves. Didn't make a save in the second half. Last time these two teams played, hasn't made a save yet in the second half. He's allowed 13 goals in that process. It really feels like Lemoyne is making an excellent switch once they find out how Hart is working against them in the first half. It's odd almost how poetic lacrosse can be sometimes. <laughs> you see patterns over and over again in a year again the second half has just not been friendly to CJ Hart it's it's crazy how statistically 100% accurate that is it's wild and still St. Anselm can't win a face off but a 
Off ball push. We'll give him actually the face off win. Nick Knoll did pick up the ground ball, but a big opportunity for the Hawks to just try and get something going on offense. A six goal run for Lemoyne since the second quarter. Zach Wells. Wells loses Nevins, but slipped a little on the turf, had to readjust his footing. He had an open look at Cage, Ooh. but because he couldn't get his feet set, couldn't fire one off. Wells is a guy who can make a difference early. Jack Robinson right into the body of Delia. You mentioned that big body of Frank Delia has made some big saves here in the third quarter. Another big reason why Lemoyne has stretched out a four-goal lead. Make it five. The Dolphins are rolling towards the cage right now. Devin Andrews. Flips it off to Sipak. Pierce. Here's McCreary. Has the short stick Harvey on him. McCreary found Pierce all alone. Pierce, the dodge question mark, and the shot got, his stick got deflected. It is a, finally a save for C.J. Hart, an easy one at that. Yeah, that's uh, a huge one for him to uh, almost be a, a sigh of relief when it comes to second halves against LeMoyne, but you're absolutely right. That was kind of a gimme right there. Got clipped by a defender's stick, and that was kind of a lollipop shot. Andrews pushes Elmore out of the way, but his shot goes wide. Two ten left to go in the third quarter. It's Lemoyne up by four. Wells. Here's Brandau. Got Brandau covering Tomaszewski. Tomaszewski trying to get across Brandau and and the backup coming from Elmer. The Lemoyne sideline loves the effort from Braden Elmer on the backup. And now they're running. Here comes Max Kramer. And Kramer will settle things down. Second midfield out. Here's Bergen. Seth Benedict taken to the ground. Well, here is Benedict, excuse me. Seth Benedict in front of Cage and just over. You don't see that miss no. very often. Benedict had that goal earlier. He dunked it in. Shows you the pressure on defense. And uh, a, a guy like C.J. Hart is not going to make big saves right in front of the cage like that. So really just got lucky on that possession. Bergen. Lambert gives it off to Benedict. And then another short stick on him. Slide comes from Slattery. Carter Collins left alone. Same with Lambert for a moment. But now Bergen, another sniper from distance, but misses wide right. 13 left on the shot clock for Lemoyne. Yeah, just shot after shot. I'm really liking this approach from the Dolphins. We saw this last time. They had 10 seconds on the shot clock and dunked one in. Can Lambert do the same? No, he can't as the shot is again wide. Five seconds left. Dolphins have maybe an opportunity to get a quick shot on Cage. You never know. Looks like they might just toss this one yeah, away. Yeah, Kevin though. Sheehan will just put it in the corner. With 30 seconds left for St. Anselm to salvage something from this third quarter. A 4 nothing run in the quarter alone for the Dolphins on a 6 nothing run in general. 20 seconds left. Nothing going for St. Anselm on offense. Jack Robinson fires the shot, and it's deflected by Delia. Casey Nevins picks up the ground ball. Two seconds left. That will do it for the quarter as LeMoyne is on a 6-0 run in the first round of the Men's Division II lacrosse tournament. We'll step aside here on Finns TV. The reigning national champions trying to make a statement early on.
Welcome back on Fins TV. Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman providing you all the coverage today for the Lemoyne Dolphins against the AC Anselm Hawks in the first round of the men's Division II NCAA tournament. We get a whistle on the first play, and on the faceoff, the Hawks will win possession, a 10-6 lead for the Lemoyne Dolphins. St. Anselm Hawks badly need a possession on that faceoff right there, and so they'll start off. And who else but Nick Larson to start it off? Nick Larson hasn't touched the ball that much the second half. Nick Larson trying to dodge towards the alley. He'll pass to the back half. Only 18 goals on the season coming into this game. The 22 assists is where really Larson makes his name. Now Jack Robinson. And a shot from distance saved from Delia. And that came from Tomaszewski, who has been really held quiet ever since that opening two goals in the first quarter. And this is what the Dolphins do here at Ted Grant Field. They'll just roll up from the right to the left side. And now with Pace coming at the goal is Braden Elmer. Flag on the field now. Looked like it was a push off the play. Either that or it was an offside call. It was at midfield, tough to tell. So we get bodies flying in the front of the cage. Sheehan did a ground there. Still slowing things down. Ben McCreary had a soaring goal last time. Same position here. Shot! And it looked like it found the back of the net. The Dolphins extend their lead. Ben McCreary so good rolling around that post. Make it a hat trick for McCreary. And Ben McCreary has gotten better and better as the season has gone on. A slow start to the season by his standards, but now he's starting to find the back a bit more. And he's showing why he led the team in goals last year. McCreary making a difference coming into the final quarter of action. It is now a five goal lead for the Lemoyne Dolphins. Fogos meet at midfield. Whistle blows. Still shoveling it out. Ball pops loose. And the Dolphins win the ground ball. A huge possession win. Looking to extend their lead now. Defenders all colliding at midfield. Carter Collins had a huge goal earlier this game. He'll pass to the right side. And now with speed, here come the Dolphins. Right post. Now to the back end of the cage. Andrews back to the left side now. Here's Evan Kelly. Sam Lambert, excuse me, back to the top. John Bergen had a huge goal earlier this game as well. So many different contributors on offense. Especially coming from the second midfield. Seth Benedict will pass to the right side. Back out to Benedict. Casey Nevins. 25 on the shot clock. 11-6 lead for the Dolphins. Pass to the inside, connecting passes, shot in front of the cage, and the back of the net. Sam Lambert makes it a 12-6 ball game. That's what you also get from Kevin Sheehan, who is just an absolute crease monkey. He's so good at finding those passes and receiving them as well. That time he's on the passing end to find Lambert, who's cutting in front of the cage. The Hawks led 3-1 early in the first quarter. Since then, the Dolphins have just ran away with it. I believe it is an 8-0 run right now in favor of the Lemoyne Dolphins. The Hawks switch their wings on opposite sides. We'll see if that proves for a face-off win. Ball pops loose. No wings in sight. The Hawks come up with it. That is a huge face-off win. A.J. Caprio, the wing on that play. Came up with the ball. He just got slashed to the top. No flag on the play. Yeah, Nate Arnold came crashing in. Caprio will switch off at midfield. Shot from distance in the back of the net. Way downtown. And the Hawks make it a 12-7 ball game. Jack Andrews. We're talking 15-plus yards. That one important is that goal for St. Anselm just to try and claw their way back into this game. It's a mountain to climb right now, but you have to start it off with a goal in any way. And like you said, that ends the eight-goal run from Lemoyne. Make it an eight-one run for the Dolphins. Snipping off the momentum. 
And all it started with was a face-off win. Let's see if the Hawks can get another one here. Pops loose to the left side of the circle. Defenders waiting. And the Dolphins will win it. Action is slowed just a little bit here. As Andrews will pass off to the right side. Midfielder cycling on, tripping over his own foot. And that's what the Lemoyne turf does to you as a whistle will be blown on the play. A timeout for the Dolphins. Sheehan, perhaps, on the trip up, saw that the ball yeah. was going <laughs> to yeah. change possessions. Mm -hmm. Well, ex excellent coaching decision there from Dan Sheehan to realize, oh, Pierce is tripping over his own legs. I, I better keep the possession here. Absolutely. Well, it's a 12-7 ball game in favor of the Lemoyne Dolphins here in the first round of the Men's Division II NCAA Tournament. I've seen many situations with the elite capability of coaches all across Central New York in general. Um, I'd like to say that Central New York is the capital of lacrosse, especially in the United States. With that being said, I remember I was on the call for a game. My buddy Giovanni Heater, uh, another broadcaster as well, was in goal for the lacrosse game for CNS. Got a possession, rolled downfield. As a matter of fact, um, I wouldn't say he's the quickest guy on the planet, but <laughs> sure enough, he ended up probably 50 yards down the field with momentum in front of him. And for whatever reason, the head coach uh, blew a timeout. And he rushed into the, the sideline, and I remember Gio telling me the coach profusely apologized because <laughs> he did not mean to have the timeout called then because only then did he realize that he was rushing towards the goal with momentum. Um, so that's just a great anecdote from my experience <laughs> calling lacrosse seeing coaches really just being so on top of their players and you know it's almost like they're inside their heads knowing what's going on and that's really that's really just a team decision right there seeing that the ball was going to get knocked loose in the trip up right there and again that's the Lemoyne turf's effect on play right there we've seen probably three or four trip ups well that's what you also get with Dan Sheehan who's been at this program for 25 years he, he's very experienced with this team winning pretty much all the national championships with the Dolphins that they have in their history. And there's a big reason why that Lemoyne has won six under Sheehan. Central New York is most definitely the capital of lacrosse in New York, if not the United States. Oh. OCC, a team uh, just nearby, down the road practically, also an 11-time national championship winner in JUCO, NCAA lacrosse. Here's a shot from distance, and it ricochets in. Ben McCreary with his fourth of the game, tearing things wide open for the Dolphins. This is the Ben McCreary that people expected at the beginning of the season. Again, the slow start didn't phase him. There's a reason why so many of these Lemoyne players got retained from this last from last year's championship team. McCreary, the leading goal scorer on that national championship team from last year. That poor net on the left side is just taking a beating today here in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Again, if you're just tuning in, it's Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman on Fins TV. 13-7 lead for the Lemoyne Dolphins in the white jerseys. Continuing to press towards the cage with momentum. Midfields will switch out. Again, Central New York, just a capital of lacrosse in the United States. You mentioned also with the Sheehan's, I mean, both dad and son, Dan and Devin, both from West Genesee. Now, Christian, you're from New Jersey. What's the lacrosse culture out there? Are you on the north end towards Long Island? Yeah, I, I am understand. on the north end. So that must be a, a healthy wealth of lacrosse culture there as we get bodies flying on the right side of the cage. Yeah, there's a lot of talent from northern New Jersey. 30 on the shot clock, pass to the top. Lining up a shot, dodging in, Benedict oh, missing hook. to the right of the post, and... You hear the giggles from my partner, De Guzman. It has been so entertaining so far. We have a man down behind the cage. Benedict got hit hard yeah. after that play. Yeah, I mentioned some of that talent that also came from New Jersey, from my neck of the woods. Uh, Brian Tevlin is from my hometown. He's one of the captains on Yale right now that is in the NCAA tournament. Same with Keegan Kahn, who's from a couple towns over in Chatham, who just got drafted to the PLL from Maryland. Applause yeah. among the crowd yeah. as Benedict will limp off the field. That could be a tough loss yeah. going forward in the NCAA tournament. And really tough for Benedict as well. He's played excellent today. He got that promotion up to the second midfield line just based on the play after, you know, we're really replacing Evan Kelly there who's been pretty much a stalwart on that second midfield line the entire year. But because of Benedict's play so far, he's gotten that promotion up. And you hope that he can continue to go because 
you can never have too many scoring options. Well, you see it here with the Dolphins. No lack of scoring options and no lack of defense either. Play at midfield from Andrews. Yeah, you check the ball out of Nick Larson's stick. And though Larson was just having trouble trying to fi fight through, and it was a great reach around track from Andrews. Nick Larson and his twin brother Noah Larson, both sophomores for St. Anselm, are focal points of the midfield offensive drive for the St. Anselm Hawks. Today, have they uh, have been held very quiet, though. Team that averages nearly 10 goals a game, 15, excuse me, well off the mark. Either way, double digits. They have been held to half of that measure today. Nine and a half to go until the final buzzer. The Dolphins almost cementing this game. Pass to the back end of the cage. 35 on the shot clock, spinning around. The agility on display from every athlete on the roster tonight. McCreary wants five. He can sense it. Oh, yeah. Ben McCreary is red hot today. He'll pass off to his partner. Pass to the inside. Shot ripped low and saved by C.J. Hart. Flag on the play, though. Yeah, late flag as well. Yeah, well after the shot. Tough to tell exactly what it was. Definitely not off sides. Perhaps just some contact off the ball. Still we're waiting to see exactly what it was. Looks like it was in favor of the Dolphins. They'll reset right around the 15. And Andrew Bonavita looks like he's going to the box, so it looks like it's his penalty. Yeah, that's another tough loss. So we've seen a couple of guys off the field due to injury and, of course, the fouls as well. No lack of that today. I believe that's the fourth flag, fifth flag we've seen today. Referees convening. No, oh, it's on Jonathan Holland. It's, in a minute. it's a minute as well, so it's got to be a trip or a slash. John Bergen will start things off for the Dolphins. No defenders in sight. And finally, the whistle will blow. Nine minutes to go until the final buzzer. 55 on the shot clock. Unnecessary roughness. Penalty Unnecessary roughness on Don't see that on very often. Bergen cycling around. And you can see it with Central New York teams. There's a specific brand of lacrosse they play. Very hard-nosed, ground ball oh, yeah. winners, but so technical on offense. You, you, you see it on both sides with some of the thoughts. Uh-oh, ball tipped loose. St. Anselm trying to force a turnover. Finally finding the ground ball. Popped loose again. Pinball action on the left side. The Dolphins, with the luck in their favor, they maintain possession. And, and that pretty much writes up exactly what this game has looked like today. And you mentioned it as well, the technical ability. So a guy like Zach Pierce from Gansport, he has those technical skills. How about that shot? Ryan Albert putting another one on the board. It's a 14-7 lead. Excuse me, Ben McCreary with his fifth of the game. 8-14 left until the final buzzer, and the Dolphins have pretty much cemented it. Now, this is the type of game that builds a ton of confidence. Uh, it feels like you can start looking forward now to what's happening on Sunday in Long Island. Delphi is going to be a tough bout of competition for the Dolphins. One of the only teams this year that's really had the Dolphins' number. Dolphins are 7-2 and two this season against ranked competition. One of their only losses this season to unranked competition is against Adelphi. Ball pops loose, sticks on the ground, and the Hawks will pick up possession. And At this point, it's just kind of a saving face opportunity to see what they can walk away with. What would you consider a win for the Hawks tonight if they can put up two more goals, three more goals, get a stop on defense? Well, I don't think for the Hawks it's a win anymore. It's a, the, the only win is actually getting a win now. Bouncing shot, that one way out of distance, and it will roll out of play. Unfortunately, with this, with the situation you're in now, yeah, you're not satisfied with anything but a win. And with some of the graduate students and seniors that are just dominated this team in general, like Sean Tonaszewski, it's it's a it will be a disappointing way to go out, only scoring one goal so far in the third in the second half. Larson, twin number two, trying to find a hole. He'll pass back out to the top of the eight. Now it's Jack Wells. Shot from distance, well out of the way. 30 on the shot clock. It bounces off the netting. The Hawks will reset behind the cage. And we were talking about that specific brand of Central New York lacrosse we see. 
Rolling around the left side, shot and saved. <laughs> Delia has just been excellent in the cage this second half. Yeah, he's made quite a few saves here. I believe it's up to four or five now in the second half and only one goal allowed. Shows you why he was the any 10 goalkeeper of the year. Dolphins still connecting passes and finally rolling past midfield with pace. 14-7 lead for the Dolphins. Again, if you're just tuning in, it's Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman. Rolling with pressure towards the cage. Dolphins up 14-7, six and a half to go until the final buzzer sounds. But it was not a one-sided affair up until this final quarter. The Dolphins were down 3-1 early in the first portion of this game. Since then, they've gone an 8-0 run with a collection of transitions between goal scoring and Finally, we landed a 14-7 score. It could certainly end that way as well as both teams have felt very comfortable just slowing things down here, including Andrews himself. Behind the cage, still scanning his options. He's dangerous from this position, though. Spinning around. Pass across the cage. Connecting passes. Bouncing shot deflected away. Great defense on display from Will Harvey. Yeah, got into the shooting lane there. That was Griffin. Griffin Ackley, actually, who was taking a look at that shot. 14 on the shot clock, awaiting the whistle. Here we go. Dolphins rolling around. Hard defense. Five on the shot clock. Four, three, two, one. Bodies flying and no shot will get off. They'll take the shot clock violation and the Hawks with a mini win, you could say, on that possession right there. They'll roll from left to right now in their navy blue jerseys. And they just got to, St. Anselm has got to just run fast now. If you want to salvage anything from this game, yeah, your season ends right now in five minutes if you're not going fast and trying to score fast. You're absolutely right. It's really just trying to maintain their, uh, their culture or their identity as a top brand lacrosse team. As we get a timeout on the field, the Hawks will talk things over. Well, Coach big, Shimana has yeah, a lot on his plate. Yeah, but it's a, a lot of credit to Coach Shimana. Second straight times that he's brought the Hawks to an NCAA tournament and only the second ever appearance in the NCAA tournament for St. Anselm so he can be proud of the program he's built right now they're just waiting to take that next step and to continually upend the top programs like Lemoyne. 100 percent now when it comes to especially division two men's lacrosse it's very regional when it comes to the eastern side of the United States it's really just you could say Massachusetts slash Boston area Long Island Baltimore and Central New York so for a team kind of out of the way of either of those regions although they are in Massachusetts it's very impressive to see the culture he's developed Fourteen seven lead for the Dolphins and for a team well out of any of those regions now in their second straight opportunity in an NCAA tournament. Shimana, even walking away with a loss today, has to pat himself in the back. Yeah, it's, it's still a great season for St. Anselm, no matter what you say. And because when you go against against some of these top heavy hitters like El Delphi and Lemoyne, you have such great history in lacrosse just in general. You mentioned the hotbeds, Long Island, the hotbed, Central New York, a hotbed. New Hampshire isn't exactly a hotbed for lacrosse. And so when you're battling against these guys who live and breathe the sport since they were young, even though it is Division Two, right, it's still it shows still showing that Coach Shimana is still building something very good out there in New Hampshire. Well, here comes this New Hampshire squad. Shimana drawing things up. Let's see if they can get a goal out of the timeout. Barreling his way through is Jack Andrews. Back out to Larson, now to the left side. Shot from distance, and he finds the back of the net, make it a 14-8 ball game. Jack Wells from 15 yards out. Jack Wells, another focal point of this offense. 19 goals, 7 assists coming into this game. And with a game like this, perhaps, you just have to start to lean on having fun. Jack Wells definitely talking his talk out there a little bit. Speaking of talking, he's bilingual in Spanish, so you can only imagine what he's saying to the other players out there. That'd be a, a little be nice funny, tactic. Yeah. Now, talking some smack yeah. in Spanish. Unfortunately for St. Anselm, the, the, the real loss here has been 
just not winning face-offs in the second half. And you see it there with another win from Atia. So the Dolphins off the face-off. Earlier this game, St. Anselm really winning the face-offs, I'd say 75% of the time. Statistically now, the Dolphins in favor of it, well over 60% this game. They have really picked up their, their FOGO work. Yeah, and it's all because Nico Matia got into a groove. And whether it was Craig Yazzoni or AJ Capiro, just no one could stop him. Under four to go until the final buzzer. A six-goal lead for the Lemoyne Dolphins. Collins scanning his options. We'll pass to the back end of the cage. Rolling around the right side of the post. Spinning and firing, and he gets another goal. Griffin Ackley finding the back of the net. That's his first of the game. The Dolphins make it a 15-8 ball game. Yeah, Lemoyne just showing not only the class that they have, but the depth that they have as well. You can start to see uh, a couple more substitutes are going to come in for Lemoyne. Coach Ian knows he has this game wrapped up. Yeah, you're going to start to find a lot of new faces out here. 42 lined up right in front of us for the wing. And the wing play has been so important today, especially yeah. for the face-off work. What can you accredit to that? when it comes to winning those ground balls for the Dolphins especially as they try and win another one here. Well, you mentioned the aggressive style that Central New York has. They started to build that a lot more in the second half with the wing. Yes, Mattia started to win a lot to himself, but then you started to see a couple people like Casey Nevins and Nick Noel start to barge people out of the way. Now, when teams like OCC and Lemoyne are so successful year after year in college lacrosse, there's no lying that the focal point of college lacrosse in Central New York is Syracuse University. They have had the off year of all off years. Ended up 4-10 and ten on the season total. Not only their first losing season in franchise history, but the worst season ever. Yeah. It, you know, and it's incredibly unsuccessful. But at the end of the day, the brand of lacrosse they play still holds an effect on many other successful high school and college lacrosse programs across Central New York. You see it in the brand of lacrosse Lemoyne's playing today. Yeah, it's a fast, strong style that pretty much defines Central New York. How about Tucker Dordovic entering the transfer <laughs> portal for Syracuse? That's a big loss. You do not see no. stars like that leaving teams that have a specific culture of lacrosse like Lemoyne, like OCC, of course, different levels. I just was reminiscing yeah. about that <laughs> when McCreary had that uh, shot from behind the the goal flying through almost looked like air gate made me reminisce about Tucker Dordovic's between the yeah, leg exactly shot earlier this same. season. That was absolutely ridiculous. 15-8 lead for the Dolphins. 25 on the shot clock spinning and firing. Back of the net once more. Griffin Ackley, two in a row. It's a 16-8 ball game for the Dolphins. And this is where um, just the Central New York brand of lacrosse is also so special because the depth on this Lemoyne team, you just see the size of the benches. It's just so strong that they have so many options that they can turn to. And even the backups who are going to be future starters for them in seasons uh, just show off some incredible class as the backups start to fully rotate in for both teams. Lemoyne can fully focus on Adelphi now on Sunday. 120 seconds left until it's Adelphi time. Dolphins pop the ball up and another win. The face-off work falling in the favor of the Dolphins in this second half, and the scoreboard indicates so. A 16-8 lead. They could walk away with an eight-goal win. Again, we talk about the specific culture and brand of lacrosse in Central New York over and over again. What about the culture of lacrosse in Central New York creates teams like Lemoyne, OCC, and Syracuse that well, just provide so much offense? It's so bred into them that in the beginning of, the, of their years of just growing up that I mean lacrosse is so important to this region in general you started off with you know, the Onondaga Nation and the Native Americans who created and founded the game and they really passed that on past the top end of the cage could not hold on to it ball pops loose and Sam Lambert and company will reset an offense for the Dolphins now you look ahead to Sunday and you see the 16 goals for Lemoyne. The thing is for the Dolphins, they're going up against 
an Adelphi defense who over two games they've only scored nine goals against. They only scored seven the last time these two teams played here in the regular season. And then in the Andy 10 championship game, Des Moines only scored two. So the offense has to come through like they did today in order to upset the Panthers and make it back to the Final Four. Griffin Ackley wants three. Pass, not connected. Deflects back out. And the goalkeeper will hold on to the ball, C.J. Hart. Any 10 third team. But man, these second halves yeah. do not look like he's a third team. NTN, any 10, excuse me, member against LeMoyne specifically. Yeah, th th that's really one of the, also the biggest downfalls for St. Anselm in this game is that in just the past two games is that the offense has fired past balls past Hart. 10 on the game clock. St. Anselm saving Grace opportunity to put a final goal away, and it's saved by Delia. That's a perfect way to end this game. That will about wrap it up. The final horn sounds. The white jerseys pour off the sideline, and the Lemoyne Dolphins down 3-1 early. Streak back. It's a 16-8 lead. The Dolphins look forward to a Delphi. The applause rains down and a beautiful day here in Central New York. We talk about the specific brand of lacrosse you have in this area. And man, the hotbed culture of lacrosse showed out. The Central New York team reigns supreme at their home. And they move on to the second round of the Men's Division II NCAA Tournament. Again, Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman. We thank you guys for tuning in here on YouTube on Fins TV. Ted Grant Field remains nearly undefeated on the season. And the second round of the NCAA tournament is what we look ahead to. Thank you guys for tuning in. Kyle Marshak alongside Christian de Guzman.